Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Janmashtami is a very happy day. Devotees of Krishna are always happy every day because they're devotees of Krishna. And Krishna is always happy. But this is an even more happy day because it is the celebration of when Krishna, the supreme happy, the supreme pure, the supreme Lord, appeared in this world more than 5,000 years ago. So it's a great festival and it goes on throughout India and now by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada who brought the Supreme Happy, Supreme Pure, Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna and Krishna Conscious to the West. Now this festival is going on all over the world. It's a great festival. Every day in Krishna Conscious is a festival. We begin every day early in the morning with singing and dancing and we take wonderful food offered to Krishna. Uh, <clears throat> Jamashtami means all day up to midnight and beyond celebrating the birth of Krishna. And actually on this day, uh, as those who celebrate seriously, they fast all day because the idea is just to be completely absorbed in Krishna. And then on the next day, they devotees break their fast. So it's a very, very happy day. Celebrated as a great festival in India. The Krishna temples are full. So many people come. And even many, uh, not only Hindus, maybe many Muslims and Christians may also come uh, to celebrate this because after all, Krishna is for everyone. Krishna is not a sectarian idea of God. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead for everyone. And in India, there's a festival on this day of climbing up the pole to try and get the butter pot. So it's a festival. It's full of joy. Festival means happy. Every day is a festival in Krishna consciousness, but Janmashtami is a very, very special festival because it is Krishna's birthday. If you want to get the full benefit out of it, though, it's not to be celebrated just as some kind of fun. There are so many festivals which are meant for fun. And certainly Krishna is fully joyful, but to get the full benefit, we should try to understand who is Krishna, why are we celebrating this? Of course, some rascals, they'll say, well, there's no such person as Krishna anyway, but that's ridiculous because persons who are learned in spiritual science, they worship Krishna. He's not a mythological figure, as some people claim. He actually appeared in this world. His birth site is still there. You can go and visit it in Mathura, which is uh, presently constituted within the uh, Uttar Pradesh state of the Republic of India. His birthplace is there uh, and his pastime places, Dwaraka, that's also there. So many places uh, which Krishna visited, Kurukshetra where he spoke Bhagavad Gita, it's still there. It's not something that someone made up. It's actually a fact that Krishna appears in this world. And to understand this point that Krishna the Supreme appears in this world. This, If we understand this, we'll get the greatest benefit from celebrating Janmashtami. Why? Because, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he teaches us. Janma karma chame devyam evangyo veti tattvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mameti sarjana. Krishna says that anyone who understands that my Janma, this is Janmashtami. Janma means birth. Ashtami means the eighth day. So this is the uh, eighth day in the, there are two fortnights in a month. So it is the day on which Krishna appeared. Janmashtami means his Janma. Now Krishna says, Janma karma chamedivyam. Janma means birth. Karma, 
Uh, in modern English, this word is often understood to mean reactions from activities previously performed, but the core meaning of karma is activities, action. So, Krishna says, janma karma cha me, cha means uh, and, so my Krishna says, birth and uh, activities, the syntax is different from English, cha me, of me, divyam. Divyam means, literally means of the uh, spiritual, literally means of the effulgent, divine. Krishna says, who understands properly that my appearance in this world and my activities are divine simply by understanding this. Tyaktva deham, having given up this body, means to die, we all have to leave this body. Uh, we don't come back again in this world, but we go to Krishna, to stay with Krishna in the spiritual world eternally with Krishna. So Jamashmi is a very happy festival. But if we understand that Krishna, he appears in this world, not like us. We are born, we don't know where we came from, we don't know where we're going, we don't know why, how we got here, who we are. We're completely in ignorance. Krishna comes out of his kindness. He's a complete, he's a person, but not like us. He's the supreme person, full in knowledge, and he comes to give us the knowledge by which we can come out of the ignorance which binds us in birth and death, birth after birth after birth. We're getting born, we're dying again, but Krishna comes to teach us how to get free from birth and death. And the best process, easiest process, is simply to understand that Krishna himself is transcendental, he is not like us, born due to our previous karmic reactions, but he comes out of his own desire. As he says in the same chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the verse which I just spoke just before that, he says, bhutanam ishvaro pisan prakritim swam adishtayam sambhavami atnamaya. Krishna says, I am unborn. And then how are we celebrating his birthday? Well, that's the mystery. It means he's not born in the same way that we are. His birthplace is there. He's known as the son of Devaki, born from the womb of Devaki. But he appears out of his own desire. Atma Maya in this verse, Krishna says. Atma Maya means by his own energy, by his own mercy. He comes to deliver us. Therefore we have the word avatar. Avatar means he comes from the spiritual world, he comes down here to pick us up. So if we want to go up to Krishna and live with him eternally and happily in the spiritual world where there's no birth, no death, no nine to five routine, no tax men, no colds and flu, all bliss. Simply living with Krishna, playing with Krishna, dancing with Krishna, eating with Krishna, joking with Krishna. Krishna comes to demonstrate his pastimes, which are described in detail in Srimad Bhagavatam, summarized by Srila Prabhupada as the Krishna book. So that this uh, topmost Vedic literature in Sanskrit is available to everyone in English and all the languages of all the major languages of the world, they describe the pastimes of Krishna, which are so attractive that anyone who's a little bit pure in heart, they will be attracted to that. So Krishna comes to show his pastimes, that we can live happily with him. What The activities that Krishna performs in this world are the same activities that he performs in the spiritual world. And it's all bliss. He's invited, he's coming down. He comes down from the spiritual world. Not that he falls down, but he comes out of his own accord, out of his own kindness, to come and say, hey, you can come, come with me, come back with me to the spiritual world. But we have to, to do that, we have to understand that although Krishna's pastimes appear to be human-like, he is transcendental. 
out of his great kindness, even though he's the supreme lord of everything and everyone, he plays with his friends, with his devotees, as if he's an ordinary person. That is his great mercy, an exchange of love, because he's so great. Many people have difficulty to understand how God can be a person, but as Srila Prabhupada would always point out, well, why not? If He, eh, he must be a person because... We are persons, and if he's not a person, then we're something more than him. How can that be? But people think, well, a person, that's something limited. Because just like I am a person, and now I'm stuck in this body, and it's limited, because I'm only in one place at one time, and I'm not anywhere else. And my knowledge, or my immediate perception, only goes as far as my eyes can see and my ears can hear uh, and, and my sense of smell uh, functions so we may think that well Krishna he's born to a mother and father so that means that he come, he's dependent on something else that's why Krishna says Janma karma veti tatvataha. if you under, to understand it properly it may not be such an easy thing because to external vision Krishna appears to be an ordinary person. He's born from Devaki, Devaki Janmavada, it's stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. It is said that he's born from Devaki. But actually that's by his own choice, his own mercy, he appears to come as if he is an ordinary person. But when he appeared from the womb of Devaki, he immediately showed four-handed form, Narayan form, the form of the Supreme Lord in his majestic feature as Narayan. And from the very beginning, he demonstrated he's not an ordinary child. And uh, his whole pastimes on this earth, we, we, don't, we, we use the word pastimes because he's simply enjoying himself. Uh, so it was full of all kind of extraordinary activities which demonstrate that he is actually the Supreme. He showed his universal form to Arjuna. He performed all, it's all recorded in Srimad Bhagavatam. Not all because everything that Krishna does at every moment is full of transcendental bliss and splendor, but a summary of his pastimes is given in Srimad Bhagavatam, which demonstrates two persons who are pure in heart, that means free from calm, crowd, law, mohammad, matsarya, lust, greed, anger, envy, pride, and illusion. Uh, such people can understand, oh yes, Krishna must be supreme. So, even though Krishna appears as a person, this may be very bewildering to some who think, well, God must be above being a person, because all the persons, that means they have, they're limited, they have material attachments, they have friends and enemies, but Krishna is above all of that. He's a person, but he's not limited. That means even though he has this form here, andantarasta paramanu chayantarastam, he enters into the heart of everyone. He enters into even the atoms. So he's all pervading, but at the same time, he is existent as his original spiritual form. So it's a great science to understand. And it's summarized in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, we have to hear Bhagavad Gita as it is to understand it properly, because many people, even though they learn it in Sanskrit, they, they don't catch the gist of it. Uh, we are fortunate that Srila Prabhupada gave us the, the clear understanding. So, uh, in, in summary given in Bhagavad Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam in great detail describes Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayati, the scientific knowledge of Godhead, by understanding which we become free from all material illusions and attachments and misconceptions and everything that binds us in this world. So Krishna comes 
to exhibit his divine pastimes and attract us that, oh, yes, we can go and live with Krishna. He's asking, yes, you come with me. And he also speaks Bhagavad Gita to give the knowledge which even up to the present day we can take advantage of and understand Krishna. The knowledge by which we can become free from illusion and doubt and misconceptions. Uh, Bhagavad Gita is such knowledge, it's timeless. It's not that, well, Bhagavad Gita was spoken 5,000 years ago and therefore it's uh, all out of date. Nowadays we have science and so many things. But what Krishna speaks of in Bhagavad Gita is absolutely relevant today because it's timeless, because it, it's adhyatmic. It deals with atma. So the atma, or in English we say the soul, the nature of the soul is the same. Now even if we have so much advancement in science, but what Krishna speaks of in Bhagavad Gita, that this material world, Dukhalayama Shashvatam, in two words, see, this is real, this is real philosophy. In two words, Krishna summarizes the whole situation of the material world, past, present, future, on this planet, on every planet, and pertaining to every living being from the little germ up to the mammoth. What is that? This material world is full of suffering. And everything here is temporary, including the universe itself. Everything is temporary. So Krishna points out that everything in this world is temporary. He gives some examples. Janma mrityu jaravya adhi udarshanam This is knowledge, Krishna says. To see how this material world is continuously miserable because there is birth, death, old age and disease. And Krishna gives the clue how to get out from that. So Krishna comes. This is uh, his mercy. He comes, he gives us this philosophy, which is just as relevant today as it was then. And it'll be relevant in, it was 5,000 years ago, it was relevant. Now it's relevant. 5,000 years in the future, it will be relevant because this material world, the very nature of it is birth, death, old age, disease, all kinds of suffering. But Krishna comes to show us that we don't have to suffer. We can go to Krishna. But there's little condition to go to Krishna. What is that? Sarvadhaman parityaja mamekam sharnam raja. As he says in Bhagavad Gita, the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita Stop trying to be happy in this nonsensical material world where we take body after body after body. In one body we, we parade ourselves as being human. In another life we think now I'm a dog and then we think I'm an elephant, I'm a, I'm a worm and it goes on like this. But just understand we are eternal spirit soul. We are part and parcel of Krishna as he says in Bhagavad Gita. Amai Vangsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatanaha Manashashtani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karshati We are all infinitesimal parts of Krishna. Then why are we in this world? We are struggling with all the senses centered around the mind. We're trying to enjoy this world. So just try to understand that our shelter, we have to take shelter of Krishna exclusively. Give ourselves to Krishna. What does that mean? Give ourselves to Krishna in love. How can we relate with Krishna? We are so small. Krishna is so great. He comes, Janmashtri, he comes as if a little child, as if dependent on his mother Devaki, his father Vasudev, then even better known his Foster parents, Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Mai, he comes as if he appears to be dependent on them out of love. Krishna comes to share his love with us. And it's not that it's restricted to a few people. He's open to everyone. He simply invites us to join him in love. That is the process of bhakti, bhakti yoga to offer ourselves to Krishna. Krishna gives us a little independence. Do we want to love him or we want to try to be happy in this material world? 
Love Him means we give ourselves exclusively to Him. We act. Krishna te kila cheshta. Everything we do, everything we think, as he says in Bhagavad Gita, Yad Karoshi, Yad Ashnasi, Yad Juhoshi, Dadasi, Yad Yad Tapasyasi, Kantaya, Tad Karushva, Madarpanam. Krishna says, you do everything as an offering to me. You have to eat. You only take food which is offered to me. Take Krishna Prasad. Don't eat here, there, just for the pleasure of the tongue. Then, whatever we do, do it as an offering to Krishna. We, we have to take difficulty in this world, whatever austerity we undertake, do it for Krishna. Give some charity, offer everything, everything for Krishna. This is bhakti, absorption in Krishna, pure love of Krishna. So Krishna comes to invite us to the spiritual world, but we can't maintain attachment to this material world. So it, it's a whole process of revamping our consciousness. This is called Krishna consciousness. And it's very easily done. It, it may sound like something very strange, but actually it's very easily done by everyone. Why? Because it's very natural to be Krishna conscious. That is our inherent nature. And especially in this age, by chanting the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This this transcendental sound, the names of Krishna, they awaken us to Krishna consciousness. The, 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 the inherent, deep spiritual consciousness of love of Krishna awakens by chanting these holy names of Krishna. So Janmashtami, the birthday of Krishna, is a very happy festival. Where the, we can celebrate it uh, by going to the temple of Krishna and especially joining in the kirtan of chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, it's also a very good day to make a resolve, take a vow that, oh Krishna, you came to this world so kindly to uplift me. So let me make a vow on this day that now I'm only meant for you. Let, let, let me go closer to Krishna. It may not be that everyone's ready to fully give themselves to Krishna, although actually everyone should, but whatever level we're at, let us on this day make the resolve that let me come closer to Krishna. For instance, uh, if we're not yet in the habit of daily chanting the Maha Mantra on beads, see we all have these beads, if, we're not, if we don't yet have beads, we can get a set of beads and start to chant. One round, that means on, on each mala, we call this, it's like a, a rosary in Christian parlance. Uh, there are 108 beads, and on each bead we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So if we, if we haven't yet started this practice, we can start at least once. That means 108 beads. It doesn't take very long. Make a vow to come closer to Krishna. We're so happy on Janmashtami. Why not be happy every day? How are we happy? Because Krishna is happy. He's giving his love. He's giving us his happiness. So we can celebrate being happy with Krishna in Krishna consciousness every day. Uh, there are various ways to do that. Like going to the temple, offering our food to Krishna. The main process for this Kali Yoga, this age of quarrel and hypocrisy in which everything is just, the whole society and everyone's mind is just a big mess. But this chanting is the main process of bhakti, of devotional yoga. So on this day of Janmashtra, it's a very, very good day to take a vow that yes, I want to come close to Krishna. Krishna, please help me. Please accept my offering. Please accept me. In great humility, we, we can approach Krishna. Only in great humility, because why should he accept us? He'll accept us if we have love, but we can't approach someone in pride and love. The two things don't go together. So very humbly we offer ourselves to Krishna. Krishna, I want to come closer to you. Please help me. 
and make the step towards Krishna by chanting his holy names. If you're already chanting, uh, we can take a vow to chant more every day. If you're already committed in Krishna consciousness, commitment means that the first level of real commitment is to accept initiation into the process of Krishna consciousness. We're already there, then all right. Then there's always further to go. Even if we're initiated, it doesn't mean that, well, that's it, now I'm there. But we have to go further, further, further. This is a very good day to make a vow that, Krishna, you came to this world to lift me up. So let me make us, let me come closer to you. You want this. It's your desire. Let me be your, let me actually be your servant. Uh, we can take this vow on Janmashtami and uh, every year we can uh, examine our vow, how we are fair and then each year go deeper. Actually every day, every moment we should come closer to Krishna. But these Vaishnav festivals, they help to inspire us, give us an opportunity to serve in various ways, the divine, especially the temples of Krishna. Uh, here in England where this recording is going on, there's a very famous uh, temple of Radha and Krishna established by Srila Prabhupada just outside London. So, so many devotees will, will go there and uh, they'll serve for days and days and days to organize so these festivals for devotees already committed, it's a great opportunity to perform service for Krishna. For others who are coming, it may be a f religious family outing, but it's an opportunity for everyone to come closer to Krishna. And that's really the essence of Janmashtami, coming closer to Krishna. Krishna comes closer to us. He's already very close to us. He's in our heart. But he comes personally into this world. He comes on Janmashtami 5,000 years ago. He comes as the deity I was saying in that temple Radha Gokula Nanda personally comes brought by his pure devotee and he comes as the holy name of Krishna. So Krishna is coming closer to us. We just have to come. Yes admit. Yes, yes Krishna I want to come close to you. So as Srila Prabhupada always said if we take one step toward Krishna, Krishna will take ten steps towards us. That is his great kindness. So Janmashtami is a celebration of Krishna's great kindness, uh, Krishna's uh, wonderful pastimes, uh, Krishna's mercy, and uh, those who are devotees of Krishna, they are naturally very happy because they are connected with Krishna. But today being a festival day, is a day of more and more happiness. So we want to communicate this to the world, to everyone. Everyone can be happy with Krishna. Why waste your life chasing after useless things, which is all, we have to lose it all at death anyway. Just give our life to Krishna. For this reason Krishna comes. For this reason we celebrate Janmashtami. So Prabhupada used to say, Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. So on Janmashtami, Chant Hare Krishna.